Good morning to you. Welcome to a new week and your bite-sized word of encouragement for today. As you know, if you're following my posts on Facebook, we had uh, a fantastic ladies' ministry morning this weekend, this past weekend, and where the theme was anointed, and I spoke to a an auditorium full of excited, expectant ladies, and God came and moved. And so I'm going to give you a bite-sized idea of some of the things that I never covered in a meeting yesterday. Some of them I did, but I will be speaking about the anointing over the, some of the next live sessions that I do. But here's your bite-sized word of encouragement for today. I'm reading from John 7, 37, and it says this. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, capital S, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now we know that today, as believers, we all have the Holy Spirit who was sent to come and dwell within us, to live within us, to make us his habitation. And so we have the, that John 7, 38, the scripture says, when we believe in Jesus, out of our hearts will flow rivers of living water. So once we are saved and um, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we live a life where there's a flow, there's an anointing, there's an empowerment, there's life, joy, there's peace. In the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So our lives change. We don't become, we, we are not the same anymore. We become new people. And at the meeting yesterday, the, the, the theme seemed to be, in everything that I said, in everything that happened, the best is still to come. And I believe that that is what God is saying to, to you and I in these days. That no matter what we see, what, no matter what we hear, um, his word remains the same and he his plans will still prosper the enemy will not succeed um and so god is saying the best is still to come and what we've seen up until now we've seen god move we hear stories from decades ago of the miracles that people experienced and they're still happening around us today but when our focus is on the horrible things happening around us, the difficult times the world is in, then we forget that God still has a plan. And so God is saying the best is still to come. Um, if you if you think of the story in, in the book of John, I think it's John chapter 2, the very first miracle that Jesus performed was at a wedding in Cana where he turned the water into wine. And and the, the, the master of ceremonies at the, at the wedding said... Um, you've saved the best for last. And I believe that that's what God's doing today. He's turning turning the water, our, our everyday activities, our, our normal uh, practices that we do, He's turning them into a flow of the Spirit, which is going to become the miraculous that we are going to see God perform around us. So we'll talk about that another time. So let's have a very quick look at what is the anointing. When we talk about the anointing, the anointing is the person of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the person of the Holy Spirit in us and upon us. Um, John, Jesus said in John 14, 16 and 17, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So here Jesus says he's going to send us the Holy Spirit, the Helper. And the Helper is also known as the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter. And um, he's the one who teaches us, guides us, he prays through us. And the Holy Spirit is the person who is with us to do all of these things. So when we say we're anointed, Yes, we have the Holy Spirit, we, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. Um, the, when, when people were set into a certain function or office in the Old Testament, they were anointed. The, um, the, it, there was a, an oil that was put upon them, anointing them, setting them apart to do what they were called to do. And it's still the same today. We've been set apart. We have been um, marked, sealed uh, marked with the Spirit of God. He is the seal, the guarantee of the promise that
that we are not left forsaken here, that, that Jesus didn't just go off and, and forget us. He promised to, to fetch us again, to come and, and take us back to be where he is. And so, so the Holy Spirit is the, the seal of promise on our lives. I'm going to look at that in the live sessions, not so much right now. So these are a few things to think about when we are anointed. The anointing is God's protection over your life. The anointing on your life is what repels the enemy, just as the shepherds in the Old Testament, and maybe today, I'm not sure, they had oil that they would rub on the sheep, on the head, and the areas that the sheep couldn't get to, to protect itself. And that oil would deal with parasites and insects that would cause disease in the sheep. The anointing is exactly the same today. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of oppression. So you, you need to see yourself as you have the Holy Spirit. You are anointed to be a believer today. The anointing upon and with you will cause people to draw to you. And that's called, that's called favor. Because of the anointing on your life, when God has called you to do something, He anoints you to do it, which means He empowers you to do it. He protects you to do it. You have the Holy Spirit helping you to do it, guiding you. And people are drawn to you to help to support you in the vision that God has put upon your life because they recognize the anointing on your life. The anointing causes you to walk in grace and be empowered. And when I talk about grace, I'm not just talking about being kind and nice to everybody. To walk in the grace of God is what has God called you to do because then there's a grace on your life to do it. If you do not have the grace on your life to pastor a church, you'll do it in your own strength. The anointing won't be there to do it. The Holy Spirit will still be there with you, but he'll be trying to guide you in a different direction, saying this is where the flow is. This is where the anointing is. Because when you do something with an anointing, there's a flow. You carry a breakthrough anointing on your life. And even though there may be challenges, I'm not saying pastors don't have challenges because we know they do but there's an anointing and a grace to overcome those challenges and still be nice to people that's because of the anointing so what has God anointed you to do what has he set you apart to do that you're doing with his backing with the help of the Holy Spirit um, the anointing is the key to walking in the supernatural and power of the kingdom of God the anointing is the key if you want to see miracles you're obedient to the leading of the Spirit of God. You do what He tells you to do. And it's the person of the Holy Spirit, the anointing on your life, that, that caused those things to come to pass. So um, Smith Wigglesworth said this, In me is working a power stronger than every other power. The life that is in me is a thousand times bigger than I am on the outside. If we could just see the power that is working in us, and we'll talk about that in the live session. If we could see with our spiritual eyes the power of the Holy Spirit, the dynamite power, the dunamis power of God working in us, um, we'll, we'll, be the same, we'll say the same thing as Smith Wigglesworth. And Smith Wigglesworth is a man of God who was around many decades ago. He's not alive today, but he raised people from the dead. It was just a, a normal thing for him to do. So when he said, in me is working a power stronger than every other power, we know what he was talking about, or he knew what he was talking about. So where has God placed you and what has he called you to do? If he's, I'm not saying you have to be called to the nations or be in, in an upfront pulpit ministry to experience an anointing. God has anointed you to be a believer. There's power that came upon the, the, the apostles, the disciples who were waiting in the upper room in the book of Acts. And power came upon them from heaven that on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God was released upon them um, to be witnesses. So where has God placed you wherever you find yourself today? Don't be looking for a Christian job. Be saying, God, help me to flow in the anointing where you placed me, even if it's in a, in a dark place with a, a horrible boss and you're the only Christian in the office. God has placed you there for a purpose, and that's where you're going to find the anointing to represent the king and the kingdom, because that's what it's all about. So be encouraged with us today, and look out for the live sessions on the anointing.